G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. We hear a lot about technology in agriculture and how it's improving our production practices. Today, I'm out near Benalla in Victoria to find out about a new type of ear tag, not only promising to improve provenance in the food supply chain, it's also proving to be a really good deterrent against stock theft and a valuable tool for managing livestock. We're going to meet Joe, a beef producer, who's using these tags for the first time. We're going to meet David, who's the CEO of the company that made the tags. And we're going to meet Chris, the processor, who's going to add value to the food supply chain, all using these unique tags. The Sarah's tag comes ready to use in the post. Joe, let's have a look at what we get in the bundle. So this appears to be the tags. We've got some instructions and then we get a pack of 10 tags and they come in two parts. Joe, can you talk us through the applicator gun and how it works? Absolutely. If you open up the case here, take out the applicator, very simply slide down this black handle Easy to squeeze. Because you would not want to waste one of these tags. You want to make sure that every single one takes. Is nice and secure, absolutely. So having a good quality gun rather than just the, the discount store version that some people might be using for normal tags, probably absolutely. a good idea. Really important. Well, let's go down the yards and um, see how it works. Sounds good. Right. While Joe got set up for the tagging, an audience quickly appeared. There's nothing like trying out new tech with everyone looking over your shoulder, is there? The tag was really easy to insert and it's no different from any other livestock tagging system in its operation. The trick is of course to orient the solar panel towards the back of the ear and it does pay to have them charged up for 12 to 24 hours before you apply the tags if you want to start collecting data straight away. The other thing I noticed about this tag is that because it has steel reinforced pins they're actually able to be much smaller than the visual tag we put on the other ear and it seemed to cause the animal less discomfort. So we have 250 acres here and yep. um, we run Angus beef cattle mm -hmm. and our aim is to have 100 breeders. So the importance to us um, or philosophy for our farming is um, all about paddock to plate um, and have a regenerative um, agriculture philosophy behind that. Really important for us to be there right from the beginning when we breed our cattle right to the end. It's our, our product. So um, yeah. everything that we do goes into our product and if we can manage the land, manage our, um, our pastures as best as we can and um, prioritise animal welfare, then we have great beef. For us, we're really interested in the information that we get of um, how the animals utilise the paddocks and the pasture, which um, areas that they're um, preferring, that will guide us as to improving other areas. The other thing that is um, going to be helpful with these tags is um, protection against livestock theft. Now having the tags in the animals and getting all the data is one thing, but using it's another. So I thought I'd better catch up with David Philpot, the man behind Mapopedia, a software platform that's been set up specifically for Sarah's tags and Sarah's authentication. So David, thank you very much for joining us today and talking about Mapopedia. Now this is one of the options that people can use for recording the data out of these ear tags, these Sarah's ear tags. But Mapopedia is sort of a good entry point for people who haven't used farm management software before to take advantage of these tags, isn't it? So the Mapupedia platform has been designed specifically for the Ceres tags. So there's functionality in here that's that's designed to make it easier to track your animals, understand your uh, the usage of your land, as well as generating alerts if, if animals escape. Uh, so it's really designed for the Ceres tags. So there's no functionality in here that's not really relevant to Ceres tags. And there's only functionality in here that, that is relevant. And it looks like you can do everything through this one screen. Can you show us a little bit about how Ceres tags helps you to track the animals? Maybe you can show us what the animals look like on this platform. So when Mapupedia first loads up, yep. uh, it defaults to loading the last 24 hours worth of data 
here we've loaded a bit more history so that we can see data from the 10th of June all the way back to the 4th of June. And as we move this slider around, we can see these, these dots on the screen, which represent the locations of the animals. You can also turn on this show path feature so that you can see that a lot of the animals were originally tagged kind of in this area and then they'll, they'll let go and, and then they've spent most of their time kind of in this area of land. So you can see that, um, that you know, quite easily that there's two distinct groups of animals. You can see the areas of the land which haven't been, been utilised as well as the ones that have been utilised. That's a really good thing if you're if you're looking at using fences for precision ag and getting the most out of your paddocks to know where the animals are actually making heavy use of the paddocks. Yeah, look, absolutely. And uh, some of the features that we're looking to add over time is to allow um, farmers to understand how far their animals have been moving uh, each day. And, and that way, if the animals have been, you know, moving further and further, say, for example, if they're looking for food and they need to travel further, then that can give them a bit of an idea as to the as to whether their land's been overutilised or not. Um, when you hover over the tags, do you get some information also? I, I just saw something come up there. Yeah, so, so that's right. So at the moment, um, if you hover over any of these individual tags, you get some information. So there's a couple of ID numbers. There's... Um, you know, when, when was the last data that came through and the latitude and longitude values, the location accuracy from the GPS. There's an accelerometer on each of these tags, which basically just indicates, so if the, if the tag is, is an ear tag, it's basically giving an indication as to how much the, the head has been moving. So um, so if the animal is, um, is sick or potentially dead, then the accelerometer reading could be low or none. Or, or if the um, or if the animal has been moving its head around a lot, maybe it's stressed or being chased by wild animals or has been involved in fights, then those accelerometer levels uh, can be high or extreme. So you can get alerts based on those. So this, so this is really a quite a unique tag, the Ceres tag. It's, it's a very smart tag and you can generate alerts based on these uh, accelerometer readings. There's also a temperature there as well. All the alerts are generated using data from the tag mm -hmm. but the alert but the data goes through the the Ceres tag servers and then the Ceres tag server sends that data through to their own Mappypedia servers um, so the actual alerts themselves that are being sent to the end user are either via phone or email or whatsapp they're actually being generated by the what uh, by the Mappypedia platform and and you don't have to have your computer turned on for that to work uh, the, the, the servers themselves will generate those alerts based on the data that's coming through. You can easily uh, add geofences. You can um, you can enter them by importing uh, data or you can just trace them out. And you can trace them out fairly accurately uh, if you want to. And then you can um, generate an alert, for example, if those tags leave a boundary. Uh, well, that, the... that animal could, could have broken through the fence. This, this green one up the top here that you've just hovered your mouse over, yep. that, could have, that could have broken through the fence and be headed towards that road up there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah, because exactly. it's left your geo fence, you'll get a text on your phone, will you? That's right, yep. So you'll get a, you can either get, you get a text or, or a WhatsApp or, or an email alert. So that could be an indication that potentially, potentially a fence has been damaged or maybe an animal's been stolen. You know, most people will say, well, if an animal, if people are going to steal animals and they know there's a serious tag in there, They'll just cut them off, won't they? We get that question a lot, actually. And um, it's actually not as easy as it sounds. Um, so, for example, uh, these tags are, are quite difficult to remove. If, if someone's really determined and they want to remove them, uh, yep. the accelerometer reading uh, would be go would go high and you would uh, likely generate um, a high or extreme uh, alert reading from that perspective. But also, if, um, if these tags are just left on the ground, then the, uh, the accelerometer reading will be none. Uh, so if you've set up the alert to receive an alert, if, if you think an animal may have died or if there, or if there is no reading, then you'll, you'll still get that um, alert anyway. There's also alerts to indicate if, um, if tags have moved either too far or not far enough in a 24 hour period, and you can set these parameters. So if a tag hasn't moved, say more than, you know, 15 meters in 24 hours, um, that could be an indication that, you know, the tag has been cut off and just left on the ground, or it could be an indication that, um, you know, the animal is sick um, and, and is just sort of stay, staying still for a long time. So you can get an alert uh, under those conditions. Or if the tags are just left on the animals, um, you know, and it's driving down the highway at 60 kilometres an hour, then you can get alerts under those conditions as well. And you can actually you can actually send GPS locations to the police. So, so. you can actually set it if you've um, if your users are familiar with uh, Google Maps, there's a feature in there where you can 
share your location. Uh, you can get a link and share that with, with whoever you like. So there's a similar feature in, uh, in Mapupedia. You can add links and, yep. uh, and anyone who gets that link can view this map and view your data. So for example, if an animal does get stolen, you can create a link and you can say, look, I only want it to last for 24 hours and you can give that link to the police. They don't need to have an account. They can just open it up and see where your animals are and it will, you know, make it much, much easier for them to try and track down where those animals have gone. I'm, I'm interested, if we could just have a look at that, have a look at the movement of those animals another time. I'd, I'd be really interested to see how that relates to the terrain. Is there a way of getting a satellite view of this as well so that you can see if they're dodging something or if they're on the wrong face? Oh, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you can uh, and you can change the colours. So, that if the um, the current colours that are currently being selected are hard to see uh, on the background, then, then you can do that. So, yeah, you can see the satellite view. That might give you um, a better idea of where to put the next fence or how to modify your interior fences in future based on the cattle movements rather than squares. There really is uh, quite a number of different types of insights that you can get by uh, by looking at how your animals have been moving over time, for sure. All right. So, David. Um, Serious tags, once people buy them, there's no, there's no additional cost. There's a high upfront fee to buy the tag, but then there's no extra cost. Um, and the tags have been designed to work with a range of software. So people might already have a farm management software system. Um, and there's a good chance that the data from the Serious tags will be able to be uploaded into that farm management software system off the shelf. Um, your system is set up for people who don't already subscribe to a farm management software system and, and want to get started with the Serres tags. Is that correct? Yeah, look, that, that's right. So there are quite a few farm management software solutions out there. Uh, many of them uh, are not integrated with Serres tags, um, but, but some of them are. So if you are already using that farm management solution, then you, you're probably better off just sticking with that. Um, but if you are wanting to start with something relatively simple and relatively cheap, because this has been designed for the Ceres tag solution and, and it doesn't have a lot of additional features um, that uh, some of the more sophisticated farm management solutions do have, then this makes it relatively simple to, to get started and relatively cheap. And when you say relatively cheap, there is a data cost every month because you're obviously receiving texts from somewhere and everything, and that costs money. So how much is it a month for a, for a platform like Mapipedia? And we're talking now in June of 2022, um, just so that people know, and we're talking in Australian dollars, which is about, you know, 10 cents American or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's just... So people understand we're talking Australian dollars, June 2022. What, what is the cost of a, of a simple get started, easy to use system like Mapipedia? Yeah, sure. So if you if you do go to mapipedia.com forward slash Sarah's underscore tag. So there's a there's a monthly fee of $20 per month and yep. then a, a, a cost per tag of 40 cents per tag. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many users you have or anything like that. It's a it's a fairly simple pricing mechanism. And and so yeah, so we, are, we do need to pay for uh, monthly data coming via satellite. So it does mean that you can track your animals uh, pretty much anywhere on the planet. It does, you don't have to have a cellular phone network coverage or anything like that. It's, you yep. know, you just, just attach a tag to the ear and, and there's not really anything else you need to do. It's very simple. Um, David, thank you very much for your time today in demonstrating this. Um, I, it's much better than getting a ham-fisted bloke like me to spend five minutes learning how to do it and try and show people. So... I really, really do thank you. Um, and I'm sure that uh, some people are gonna get on to you and, and wanna know more about Mapipedia. Um, it is one of the platforms, it's not the only platform. Um, and as you've well explained, it's a good, easy entry level platform um, to get very usable and very immediately actionable data from the tags. So thank you for your time. Um, and I will put a link to Mapipedia in the comments section of the video for you, how's that? Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, look, if, if anyone's got any questions or if they want more information, feel free to reach out. Uh, happy to help where we can. David, welcome. How are you? Now, you're the, you're the founder and CEO of Sarah's Tag. Yes, I am. Thanks very much for having me here. So the cost of entry, mate. Um, new technology always seems to have a high cost. Um, now, your tags are, what, $3,000 for 10 or $4,000 for 24. Um, but you've actually figured out that maybe that's the way to go because the, the other tag technologies that use remote sensing and all this sort of thing, 
um, actually have a higher ongoing cost. Can you talk us through a little bit about why you've designed the platform for the way it is? Yeah, sure. So the other the other technology, of course, you've got to put up the towers that, which are expensive. Ours is like plug and play. Yep. So very simple and we can communicate with any software that you want, which is a very significant difference to everybody else. And I'm, I'm not locked into any particular kind of farm management software, so if I already have some, is that going to be a problem? We prefer that. In fact, we built the, built the system so that you don't have to change the software. We just integrate straight into your existing software, nice and easy, plug and play. Thank God for that. What we are trying to do here today is actually start, it's the start of our program for Ceres Authenticated. So Ceres Authenticated is a new mark that enables us to ensure the consumer that the animal has been on a single property for at least 60 days. So it's a new form of traceability. And this is all real time data that will be able to transfer and provide that trust and confidence about where our food comes from. All right. yeah. I was lucky to have a chat to Chris Belize. He's got a unique business that actually processes the animals on farm and he's taking full advantage of this new technology in being able to map where the animals come from. Now you're the processor for Joe's uh, meat. You value at a farm gate, which is quite unique in Australia. Can you tell me a little bit about how your company operates? So Provenir is Australia's only on-farm processor. So quite simply, instead of the animals going to the abattoir, the abattoir comes to a farm like this. Now that's been a really difficult thing to do, hasn't it? Because there's been all sorts of interpretations of legislation, there's been all sorts of inspectors, there's been all sorts of hurdles that you've had to go overcome. Can you talk me through a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have to meet all the same standards as any other abattoir in Australia. Yep. Uh, in, in Victoria, we actually had to change the laws to allow our operation to exist. So you had to make the Victorian government change the laws so that you could exist? Correct. That would have taken a couple of weeks, I imagine. <laughs> yes, the uh, law change is a very quick and uh, simple process. No, that took several years from there. And, yeah. and it was just a bit about that the legislation, when it was drafted, the concept of a mobile abattoir just didn't exist. Yeah. So it was actually bringing the regulations up to you know, today that we have the technology to be able to do that and that needed to be reflected in the um, laws and the legislations and the regulations. Now Chris, today we've been applying some Ceres tags to some of these young calves. As a processor of, of meat and as um, a marketer of meat, um, what do you think the benefit is of spending this amount of money on new technology um, in terms of improving production? Is it worth it? I think it is. So what we're doing here is, is a proof of concept. Uh, yep. trial from here. So um, from our perspective, Provenir, it's uh, Spanish for provenance. So yeah. that's all about what we are. We're about providing meat that has that traceability back to the farm. Now we have our own digital provenance platform from the time the animal walks into the abattoir to the time the consumer has the meat on their plate. What we've been missing right. is from the time these little tackers have grown up to the point of processing as well. And so when David approached me about being a part of this uh, project, I was really excited because we can take that on-farm data plus our processing data to for the first time in Australia that I understand that we can have from conception to consumption data across the entire food chain and then we can provide that to the consumers that really value to know where their food comes from. So these tags are not only evaluating for Joe, they're evaluating for your business as well. Absolutely. So when we process these, we will be going to the top end restaurants that we already have a fabulous relationship with and saying, let's take this to the premium customers in your premium restaurant and say, this came from a cow or a calf or a steer that was raised on this farm at this time all the way through to being on your plate. And that's what traceability is. This is providing evidence to award farmers that look after their land. Correct. And produce great beef. Indeed. And that now allows us to actually have the data, not just the story, but the data from on the farm through to the plate. So the value of the tags seems to be that you can manage your property better, you know where your animals are at all times, 
and you can value add at the farm gate, meaning that you can charge more for the product at the end of the production cycle. I'll be really interested to see how these tags go. New technologies can sometimes be fraught with adaptive problems, but from what I've seen today, the tags go in the year probably easier than the standard tags, and anyone who's ever tagged an animal will immediately know how to use the tagger. The plug and play nature of it and the ability for it to work with any of the common farm management software systems that are out there probably means that there's less barriers to adoption with this technology than I've seen in many others. I'll be really keen to see how the story unfolds over the next couple of years. Guys, don't forget, if you like this sort of stuff, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.